All right, I'm going to start by spending the first 10 minutes. You guys can just tune me out if you want, but going over for Gabriel's sake what uh, what Thank we you. went over yesterday, because I don't want him to you know miss out on anything, so to speak. All right, so let's see. Yeah, there's you know it's it's not what you probably call all that great here for you to be able you know there's there's a lot of aesthetic things I wish we could fix in here, but we're not. So. Yeah, and on the original thing that I sent out, it said 12:35 on here, but it is 12:05. So I'm glad you, right. you you saw that. What's that? Right. I'm yes. Wondering. Yes. And as I told the people yesterday, I get here at 5:45. So if you tell me I can go home at four as opposed to 4:30, I'll take four. Okay. All right. We will be in here. We will also be in here for the Android class in spring. We will not be joined by Ms. Shelton, but we will have Nick from last semester and James will both be in here. They're both in the class in the morning now. So. All right. So one of the things I told people, and you, you can do this if you want to. You are by no means do you have to do this. But if you go out, you don't have to go out to GitHub, but if you do go out to github.com whoops god oh my goodness github.com slash j was it jp scott or jeff scott i don't remember no i think it was jp scott jp scott okay i'll take your word for it rankin if you go out there no oh boy oh it's also it's not rannon it's Rankin. Okay. What you're going to find out there, you have to go out to my repository, and it is. I don't remember now what I called it. This is a great start, isn't it? Flavio Copes. And I'll explain what Flavio Copes is in just a minute. So let's put the whole thing out there. Not only that, I've, I've got one mask that the side broke here. My wife fixed it, but I can't tie it now. So now every time I breathe, it's fogging up my glasses. So this is... All right. All right, this summer, amongst other things, one of the things that I did was I went out to FlavioCopes.com, and Mr. Copes is a guy who writes a lot of IT books, and I have done about 50 tapes based on, he's got books on HTML, CSS, uh, JavaScript, there's two of them on JavaScript, um, Node.js, which we're going to start on in a couple weeks, Express.js, which you use with Node, and React which we also are going to use with Note. So if you go out there and you go to that repository that's there for that one, and you just click code, you can copy all of the PDFs. Okay, so all seven of those PDFs. Okay. All right, if you don't care, then you're not hurt my feelings. Any of them, just don't do it. That's totally fine. All right, so that's them right here. These are the ones. Okay, and let's see. This is a description of the, of the course. As we mentioned yesterday, this, what this course is, is it is server-side JavaScript. When we first start, you will be using your machines as both a client and as a server. And if you say, I don't know how to do that, yeah, you already did that. Remember when we were using My, MySQL and we ended up using XAMPP? That's what you were doing at the time, all right? Not only that, when we get into this, <clears throat> there's more than what's shown right there because we are going to do a little bit of work with MySQL again. <clears throat> then we're going to go in and work with Node, I'm sorry, MongoDB, which is a different kind of database that's normally used 
with Node.js, but you can use MySQL with Node.js. So we will build a real simple application with MySQL, so we'll get that out of the way and then we'll jump into Mongo. Okay, this is what you're supposed to get out of the course, uh, those level outcomes right there. They are being much stricter here. For instance, if you walk in here at 1216, I am supposed to mark your target. Good or bad news for you guys is the fact that Mr. Corrigan is right there. So if you walk in late, he'll see it. He can go into my stuff at any time. You know, you know what I'm saying? My records and stuff. And um, now I was surprised he'd come over and talk to me because two people walked out this morning at 11.50 and before I could even stop them. In fact, one guy came back and he goes, are we allowed to leave? And I, no. I said, no. So, and then Nick Kotner came and said at the end of class, you better tell them too that when they take their first test, when they're done with their test, they can't just leave. Because I can tell these guys are going to do that. I said, well, we'll see. <clears throat> but you get six absences just like before that if you get number four, you get that piece of paper that you've got to sign. I, I sign it, you sign it, that just says, you know, you missed four times. After five, Mr. Corrigan's got to sign it. After six, um, you got to go over by Patrick or Brandon and have them sign it. After seven, I'm supposed to, to kick you out, but you can't fight it. All right. And again, I don't know if I said this to you guys yesterday, but I'm saying it right now. If you have any symptoms, I mean, you wake up and your throat's just killing you tomorrow. Don't come in. They don't want you to. They don't want anybody here to be a super spreader. Okay? So, they. but what you are supposed to do is if you wake up and you, you're ill in any way, email me immediately. Then I have to email. You tell me what's wrong. Then I have to email uh, Ms. Bruggeman. Now, I'm not to be gross or anything, but if you wake up and it's diarrhea, it's probably not going to be COVID. I would think that'd be pretty safe. But that's fine. So I don't have to let her know that. But if, you know, if, if, if you know, like I said, if, if I, oh, Gabriel Brady got a, you know, sent me an email this morning. He's got a sore throat. If you've been in class before, she will contact you. She will ask you what your symptoms are. All right. And I believe she will tell you, depending on what, I, I, they've got some kind of setup there, that you may have to show that you've got a negative COVID test before you can come back. All right. <clears throat> All right. Also, we start at 12.05, so if you come in here and it's 12.16, I'm supposed to mark you tardy. And it's going back to the old rules, two tardies equals one absence. All right. Don't cheat. There, huh? That made that one fast. They, they did a little bit of revamping, I think, on the grade grades that are in here. I still think this is funny because we're supposed to put this in, even though Rankin doesn't give these. But whatever. Any questions on anything, go to in, Inside Rankin for it. Um, <clears throat> any problems, you know, you need tutorial assistance, disabilities, career services. I said this yesterday, all of you should go to the Rankin page and, and go to the, the uh, Rankin connection and sign up for that because it's just got job listings in there. And they'll keep doing it even after you graduate until you tell them that you don't want them to. Um, I asked you guys yesterday, I'm asking you this right now, are you signed up for that? Thing where you get the emails from Rankin yeah okay you might want to check on that because go under notifications because it usually expires after a year so if you just did it like a year ago it might be expired like mine expires in February all right, all right. but um, it's remember it's Rankin's way that they do not uh, put on a radio or TV if school, or can't, if school is canceled for any reason. So that's the only way that you'll know. That's why you need to make sure that you've got that. And also, though, they send you like a check. They, yeah, them. it's all from the same thing. Yeah, yeah I just got mine a month ago. And they okay. Me no yeah. Well, and they usually do that about once a month. Yeah. And they do that just to make sure, because then, then I'm supposed to ask that everybody get the text or everybody get the email this morning. All right. <clears throat> now, we didn't go over much of this. But the idea in this class is in weeks, at least weeks one and two, and hopefully it'll be just weeks one and two, we're having an overview of HTML5, an overview of CSS3, and a review of JavaScript and some of the stuff that's in that other that book that we haven't talked about yet. As far as the review of Git, there's nothing to review with you guys. You all know how to use Git. I don't think that's going to be any kind of an issue for you. 
All right. So what we did yesterday, and did you guys have a chance to do one, at, at least finish one of them? Did you get into the second one? Did you finish the second one? No, that's what I, I kind of figured. So this is what we did, the other thing that we did yesterday. I'm going to show you this, Gabriel, right now. And you can do this just like everybody else did yesterday. Go out to WESBOS.com. This is a guy named Wes Bose. And he provides courses that are both free and ones that you pay for. Over on the first tab here, click on the courses. And I want you to, you basically, you'll have to give him a little information, but he doesn't, no credit card, no nothing, and they're free. I want... I want you to go through this thing right here, what the flex box, and where was the other one? Is it in here too? There's another one for CSS Grid right there. They're both free, and I gave people yesterday, We I only went till about 2 o'clock, and then from 2 till about quarter to 4, I had people start to go through that on their own. All right, so I'm going to ask that, and you may be a little behind, That's you can catch up, that's no biggie. But I'm going to ask that you guys do that for the first part of the class today. And then I'll ask you about 2 o'clock. Okay, did everybody get done? If you did, great. If you didn't, you know, I, I, I will probably just go on anyway because I want to give you some examples. And I actually have a first assignment for you. And I'm going to show you that. I've got hard copies, but let me just show it to you. You may have already even seen it. Now, unfortunately, again, I'm going to have to go and, and it might be on this flash drive. So let's see. I'm going to give you all, I've got a hard copy of the first page, but I'm going to give you all a copy of it as well. So let's see. I think that's it. All right, let me show you what you're going to make. It's not hard. All right, I'm going to give you all the text that you need in here, every bit of text. So I'm going to give you all of this stuff and all of this stuff, and actually the text on the next page is the same. It just does not have the... Uh, does not have the image. I'm going to give you the image. All right. In the MPG thing here, I'm going to give you that image. So I want you to build this site. Like I said, I've got it all, but I'm going to send it all to you. I've got to move it from that machine to this machine so I can do that, but I will do that in just a bit. And you're actually going to write this, believe it or not, four times. And what I mean is you're only going to write the HTML once, but I want you to use, you can use a float in here, to basically put the image in. All right, but you'll notice if you look at this, it is 100% non-responsive. I think you'd agree with that when you look at it. It's not responsive at all. All right, then I want you to rewrite it using just media queries. Now, if you decide you'd rather do it, you can also use Bootstrap, but you don't have to. All right, if you think that's easier, you can do it with Bootstrap. But I want you to use media queries, and I want it to become responsive. Then I want you to do it again, and I want you to use just Flexbox and make it responsive. Now, you can still use media queries if you want to or need to. And for the last one, I want you to do it again with Grid. All right. And then on Monday, because I think I'm, you know, I'm, it's almost a week. We can make it Tuesday if you need to. But Monday, I'm going to ask that you get, turn me in what you have. I'm not, I don't know how many points I'm going to make it worth, but it's to get give people some points to get you started. Does that make sense to everybody? So I think someplace in my mess here. <clears throat> Mr. Corrigan spent quite a bit of time working on the, the machine that I used this morning because for whatever reason it would it wouldn't print. Eventually I had to go print from his room. So I the number of pages I would normally have printed, I cut it down because I didn't want to do it because he had people in there. So this is it. I'm going to show this to you right now. And I will, I've got it in a Word document where I've got the pictures of each one of these. All right, so I took pictures of each page. <clears throat> All right, so let's see. All right, let's just go through this then. It says, using the material provided, and again, I've got a hard copy or an e-copy that you're going to get literally in just a couple minutes.
please create the following website for web pages based on the screenshots shown. And those are the ones that I just showed you. All right. So again, that's all of you know, that stuff. All right. You're going to have to shut your thing a little bit. That's okay. Sorry. No problem. Yep. All right. So as it says, version one, <clears throat> use floats for the image. Images, don't worry about making it responsive. In other words, just get it done. If you'd want to get it done in straight CSS, straight HTML, etc., not a problem. Then do it that way. All right. Then you're going to go back and you're going to re redo it using media queries, just media queries. I don't want there to be any flexbox or any grid. I just want you to get back into the swing of using those. Then I want you to use flexbox. All right. I'm going to show you some examples and how and ways that, that that may help you. We're going to go over that either starting this afternoon. Or first thing tomorrow. We'll see how the time goes. And then finally, I want you to do it using grid. And if you want to, you can use it with grid and flexbox. All right. This is the color scheme that I used. So the you know the body, you can see all that stuff. All right. Then it says make sure you use the semantic elements. Why? Because that's the way you're supposed to write these things. So in other words, this, all of this, this here, and and this, this will be in a header section. This stuff will be in the nav section. That'll be in a footer section, etc. Does that make sense to everyone? All right. Add a reset at the beginning. You may or may not remember from a year ago, but we were using the normalize.css. You could copy that. Or you can go out, if you want the probably the ultimate um, reset, go out and just Google Eric Meyer's reset CSS file. And it's about 70 lines. You can he you can copy that. He makes it open source. All right. <clears throat> and again, you're going to build those. So what what I want you to do is keep working on these two West Bose things. I will ask at two o'clock, around two, two to two thirty. I'll say, where are you guys? Okay. Questions? What you're supposed to do? All right. And I will send this to you literally in a matter of minutes. Hey guys, it was a uh, Visual Studio Code that we used to uh, build code, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, it is. Yeah. I'm gathering that right now. Oh, wow. Rolling Stones drummer Charlie Watts died. Like going on a tour and he announced he wasn't going to tour with him. I didn't think it was that bad. <laughs> Of course, he's 80 years old, touring is kind of weird anyway, but whatever. Headphones? Yeah. Good. Because <clears throat> I asked that yesterday and luckily everybody can. So. Yeah, I'll try to follow along the video without audio. Okay. I think it'd be easier to follow along with the audio, but. Maybe. <laughs>
shelf up a copy of it. I'm going to try to find it again. <clears throat> So again, I sent all of you an email which of course I'm having a problem getting on my Outlook account here. It's not recognizing anything. Well, let's see if it does now. Right, and I put in I put in the right information, and it's not recognizing it, so that's not a good sign. That is the right password. It's not recognizing my password, so that's okay. Again, what I want to do, <clears throat> let's start with the one. I think it's called both. Can you find that? All right. And you'll, if you notice, if you look on here, this, the example that's here, well, not, the, not that one, the actual example, not a picture of the example. Right now, it looks like this, which is not very much. All right. I think we all agree with that. So, I gave you a CSS starter file, so we're going to put some stuff in there, and we'll put in some stuff, and then we'll take a look at it, and then we'll put in some more stuff, and then we'll take a look at it, etc. All right? <clears throat> so right now, you don't have a whole heck of a lot in your CSS file. 
All right, but I'm going to ask that you open it up anyway. I'd say that's that would constitute not a lot. All right. We could set this to any font type we wanted to. What I did was I did this, made some changes to the one I found online, and um, that's what I'm going to be working on with you right now. So the first thing to take a look at in here is we what remember what I said, what we want to come up with eventually is this. We don't have any of that really right now other than the content. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up and take a look at what's in the header. And when you look up there, there's two different things. There, it, sorry, if you look over here, there is a home, an about, and a contact. They're not operational. They're not meant to be. All right? But the idea is what we want to do is by using a combination here of Flexbox and Grid, we want to be able to, when we start to shrink this thing down, which you'll notice, it, all right, again, that's the picture. Uh, let's see, do I have my copy here? All right, so we want it to look like this, and we also want it that when it starts to shrink, as you'll notice, it looks nice. I'm not saying it looks fantastic, but it looks very presentable. Not only that, when you look at this, you'll notice that when we get to a certain point here, that once we make it smaller, that this goes down onto the next line. Now, there's a lot of ways that could be done. In other words, we could have stacked this, etc. So there's a lot of things that could have been done here that weren't done. Okay? All right. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to come in there and we're going to build, put in the HTML to basically create the header section. All right. Give me a second here. There we are. All right. So, you know, I, I don't think I'm saying anything that you don't all understand. Let me open this. I'm taking for granted that by now that when you look at something like this, that makes sense to you. I really should have made that a header section now that I look at it, not a div with a class equal header, but it's okay. All right, we could change that. That's no no big thing. We could have, we could change that just as well. All right, and it should work just fine. So in other words, I should be able to come in here and just type in header. And I'll keep the class of header in there because I've already got that. But this is making it look more the way whoops, more the no, that was nice. More the way that it should look. So that would be header as well. Like that. Alright. It's no it shouldn't be any big thing one way or the other. The key thing is this. I've got a class of header. You all see that. So let's go in and start writing the CSS for the class of header. So you know it's dot header. And I'm just going to start putting some stuff in here, all right? And the first thing we're going to do is just put a little padding in here so it looks presentable. Now, I'm asking the question because I don't know. Do you remember those shortcuts? Remember that I mentioned to you this is kind of like a clock, that if you use four numbers in here, what we have in here right now, this, is the same thing as if we had said this. All right. Again, it's like a clock where the first number is like 12 o'clock. That's the top. The second number is like 3 o'clock, and that's right. The third number is like 6 o'clock, and that's bottom. And the fourth number is like 9 o'clock, and that's left. So it's left, bottom, I'm sorry, top, right, bottom, left. And since we want these to repeat, we can do it like that, and it doesn't hurt anything, but it's kind of redundant, so typically you would do it like that. Does that make sense to everyone? The other thing, too, that you should be getting used to, it's totally fine to say this is 45 pixels, all right? But we should really be working more with REMS whenever we can. And remember that there are 16, by default, there are 16 pixels in a REM. All right, so I could have really changed this. It would make it 48 pixels instead of 45, but I really could have just changed that to 3 rem. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. All right, let's give it a background color. 
And remember when you do this, you can say background or you can say background dash color. Either one will work. All right. And we're going to put in pound two, eight, three, five, nine, three. All right. And for our text, we'll just make it white. Also, you should remember this from last semester. Now, I can say white. All right. I can say pound FFF, FFF, but since it's a repeating pattern, that's the easiest way to do it right there. And again, that should make sense. Hopefully that, you know, you say, oh, yeah, I kind of remember that from last semester, etc. All right. So none of that stuff is new. But what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to use Flexbox in here. All right. So in order to be able to do that, we have to command and say display flex. So what you do is on the outer part of what you want to be able to manipulate, that you basically set up your display flex. All right. Now, what we want to do is we want to line the stuff up and we want it to be fairly centered looking. There's different ways you can do that. And this is why I had you run through that. So I'm going to use a justify content and we'll use the space between. All right. Then we will align the items that we have and we will center align them. Center. All right. Finally, what we'll do with this, this is, if you remember when I made it smaller, and when the three menu options went down to the next line, that's where this flex wrap comes in. The default on this is, I'm, and don't put this in, the default is no wrap. Or no wrap. Don't do any wrapping. But we want it to wrap when it gets small enough. So we say wrap. All right. So my question is, by looking at what I ask you to take a look at before, the, the stuff that's going on in here makes sense, or at least a little bit of sense. So if I save this, all right, and now, Now, this is the one for you guys, so open with code. We are going to continue to use Visual Studio Code as our editor for Node as well. Okay, I think I told you that yesterday, but just in case I did. All right, so let's see. This is the both. This is our index. And does it have the CSS I just put in? Yes, so there's the CSS. Okay. Open it with live server. And doesn't look very changed. Well, it will in just a second because we're going to start adding this stuff for the nav bar. Okay. And also, I think the reason it doesn't look more changed is I commented that line out. See that? Yours may be commented out as well. So go into the index file, and if your link to the style sheet is commented out, uncomment it. All right. What I was going to do is I was going to have us key all this stuff in, and I thought that's kind of a waste to have you type in all that much stuff. So let me try that again. All right. Well, not great, but hopefully you can see. Okay. We've got this stuff. So we've got this. You can see the background. You can see the color. The next thing to work on is the nav bar. You should all be comfortable by now with knowing how to take a nav bar that looks more or less like that 
and do a display block on it to line it up and make it look decent. Okay, so let's do that next. All right. So again, it was just a class called nav, so dot nav. Okay, and the first thing we'll do is for the anchor tag. All right, so what do we want to do? We want those to be white because the text that we have in there is white. We don't want the underlines there. We want it to display blocks so it'll be horizontal as opposed to vertical as it is right now. Okay, and that should be good. So let's again take a look at all right, so if I refresh, why is that book to refer? I think it missed anything. Well, let me look. But I think it I think it's correct. All right. Color F F F none display block. I had a transition in there. We don't need to do that. Well, I'm not sure why, but we'll, it, this is all going to work when we get done. If nothing else, I'll just give you the master that I've got. That's what I'm working off of anyway. All right. Then hover. And again, you will typically want to be doing this, putting in a little bit of a different color when you hover over something. So I've got pound C, 5, C, A, E, 9. Okay, here's a question for you. Does it matter if I put those numbers in uppercase or lowercase? Yes. Want to try again? No. No. There you go. Those are just the num those are the numbers literally in base 16. Remember, when you go into base 16, it's 0 through 9, then A, B, C, D, E, F. So it doesn't matter if you put them in uppercase or if you put them in lowercase. All right, and I know what the problem was. I wasn't done yet. So let's keep going. So we've got our anchors. We've got our anchor hover, but I really should have put up here. So move back up here if you would. And let's just do the nav itself. All right. It doesn't matter, again, here it doesn't matter the order in which you put these, but you should get used to naturally putting stuff in a regular order. I was talking to the first year students today, and, you know, I was telling them, we were talking about comments, all right? Then we were talking about, you know, things that you can put in, but you don't need to put in. And I said, hey, you know, you get to a point where you're looking for a job and you, you know, if, if between you having an electronic portfolio and you having stuff out there on GitHub, if somebody's going to hire you, they're going to be looking at your code. That should make sense to you. And they're going to be looking at your style, what you do. So we were talking about alt tags. You know, and one of the people, one of the students asked, do we really, do we need, really need to put in the alt tag? And you know there's different reasons that you put it in. You put it in for like a browser for the blind. You put it in in case you don't have uh, the actual file there or you gave it a wrong name or whatever. But I, I, I told them and they kind of looked funny, but I said, you do it because it's the right thing to do. And that's when you go out and you're starting to look for a job. That's what a lot of prospective employers are going to be looking for. All right. Do you do things the way that they should be done, in other words? All right, so this was the one I need here to say list style none. That'll get rid of the bullets. Well, and we want no margin. We want no padding. And we again want to display display flex. All right. Next, and I'm going to put it up here. So right underneath the nav that we just did right here, I'm going to do a nav li. Dot nav li. And this is just to position them. So I'm going to put some left margin on each one. Okay, we don't have to do that, but it'll make them look a little nicer so they're not crunched together. 
So I'm going to put here a margin left, and we'll put in 1.25 rem. All right. So I'm asking here, does everybody have, so far we put in the header. Everybody's got that? Then we did the nav itself. Does everybody have that? Then we did the nav li. The nav a and the nav hover. I'm going to save. I'm going to go back and look at this again. And now you can see what it looks like. All right, we even put a little bit of a color on it so when it's highlighted, and there's different ways to do all this stuff. All right. All right. Questions? Any anything so far? Well, let's go back then and look and see. Okay, how did we use flex in here? All right, because that I mean that's what this was supposed to be about. So where did we use flex? How did we use flex, etc. In here, this is the other one. Now, this morning, <clears throat> I couldn't print. Okay? Charles came in, and I said, I'm doing something wrong. I just want to know what I'm doing wrong. So if it happens again, he tried. For almost a half an hour. He couldn't print. When I came in here last week, the mouse I had that I've been using for the last three years that I love, because it works really well, stopped working. He's like, I think it's dead. So he gave me this one, which I just hate. All right, I've tried... Uh, going from one to the other, I don't like either one of them on this machine. So, all right, so this is where we are. All right, so where did we use it? Well, not, not in the body, in the header. We said, again, we said in here, we've got this lex wrap wrap, right? And again, what that, what that says, does, whatever you want to call it, is when I come back into here, so notice now when I start to shrink this down, you see how it wrapped? All right. Now, again, there's plenty of different ways that you can handle this. And I'm not saying the way that I did was the best way. It's a way. Okay? All right. Okay. Then we came down the nav bar itself. We said it was gonna it was gonna have display flex. Sometimes the hardest thing on here is to know with what to put display flex on. Typically, when you're in in a, in doubt, you'll probably have something something like a div or a class or something and something inside of it. All right. If the thing that's inside of it is what you want to be able to manipulate, you put the display flex on the thing outside of it. Does that make sense? All right. So in our nav, we want this to remove the bullets. We want no margin or padding because we want to control it ourselves. And we want to be able to display this with flex. All right. What are we displaying with flex? We'll take a look. All right. So what that is going to do is it's going to add automatically rather just set it up for us. In other words, it's going to position it the way we want it to be positioned. All right. Our list items, again, we just put a little bit of space in between each one. If we remove this, what you're going to find is all three of them are going to be squished together. All right? Of course, we don't want that. The actual links themselves, we colored them. We took away the underline. We displayed block. So Because, again, by default, they display inline, right? If this is an unordered list, which by default will display inline. I'm yeah. Okay. So when we come in here... Now, when we hover over it, we're just changing the color a little bit. Nothing big in there. So let's go back, and I want to look at it again. So let's look at the index in here. So that basically has taken care of everything that's in here. Does that make sense? Okay. So we handled that header. 
all right? And we handled our nav. So again, <clears throat> this could have been a nav section too. It probably should have been. So the next thing to do, and quite often you see this, you know, the, the main part of your page is either called hero, sometimes it's called banner. It goes by different names. So I just used hero. And you'll notice that we have a hero and we have a hero inner. All right. We're actually going to display flex on the hero in just a minute. All right. So remember, the idea is you're starting, hopefully you're starting to see that this is coming together a little bit. All we've done so far is the top of it. And this was just, just random text. All right. So let's go on. Now go back into styles here. And we're going to go down to the bottom now. And I'm going to put in our hero class, so dot hero. All right, again, we set up a background color. The same one we used before, pound C5, C, C5, C A, E9. All right, put some padding in here. All right, so we'll, take, we'll put in 4 rem and 3 rem, 4 rem. 3 rem, and we're going to tell it to display flex. That's where all the magic happens. All right. I didn't know whether to go through this one first or the other one, and I'm still not sure if I've done it the right way or not as far as the one I went through. We'll see when we get going in just a minute. So, justify content. Center. To me, I went through the West Bowes thing that I asked you to go through. And I've also gone through some tutorials, and I went through a, the W3Schools tutorial on this. It's not that this is that hard, but there's a lot of different things you can do. And it's figuring out the thing you want to do and putting it on the thing you want to do it to. That's what makes it hard. All right? All right, so let's start adding some stuff in here. So that's our hero itself. If we looked at it now, there's not going to be much change. Let's look at, let's come in here and say the hero h1. All right. So I don't really, the way that this is set up, we don't want it to be bolded. So if I say font weight normal, that removes the normal bolding that you get on an h1 tag. All right. Font size, 4 rem, and no margin. Now there shouldn't be, shouldn't be, anything in there that's like a really big surprise to people or you go, geez, I don't know what that is. My guess is that you all know what that is. All right. So the next thing that's in here is the paragraph. Now, are we all comfortable saying this means H1 inside of, of class hero, paragraphs inside of class hero? Does that make sense to everyone? All right. So we'll put a couple things in here. Font size, 1.18 rem, and line height. I'm asking this because, again, I don't know. And if, you, if the answer is no, then it's on me, not on you. Line height is the amount of height between two lines in a paragraph. Does that make sense to everyone? This is kind of a weird setting because this is one of the few settings you don't put rem or pixels or anything. You just put a number in there. That's all you put in. All right. <clears throat> now, a little bit more that we're going to do, and then we'll take another look at it. But before we do, all right. One thing to realize when you look in here, after we put in this stuff, we've got this. I don't think that's a surprise to any of you to know that's a hyperlink. All right. But without using Bootstrap, we're going to make it look like a button. Okay. And it, again, this is just something that you should be able to do. All right. So I'm going to come in here. And say dot button because we gave it the class of button. Could have called it anything. We're going to do a little bit different background color. A 
Again, we'll have the text on here be white. Remember, it's a, currently a hyperlink. So we want text decoration none. We've got to do that to remove it. Then to start making it look like a button, we'll add some padding to it. All right, and again, that should make sense to you. And we will add padding the same way we did it before. So I'm going to say 0.75 rem, which is the same as 12 pixels, and 1.25 rem, which is, again, the same as 20 pixels. All right, we're going to round the button a little bit. So we'll put in border radius, and we'll set that to 0.5 rem. All right, we'll bump up the font size a little bit. So font size 1.18 rem. And we will display this in line block. All right, so we've got more control over. Remember, you should by now, again, this, and this is the stuff I went over with the, with the newbies today you should be able to start understanding or, or have an understanding of the difference between a block element and an inline element. We looked at many block elements last semester, things like divs, things like paragraphs. By default, they take up 100% of the width. All right, and you can always change it, of course, with CSS. And by default, they're going to have a line before them and a line after them. On the other hand, with inline elements, they're, they're typically defined inside of a span or there's something inside of a div. All right. So if I save this now and go back again, all right. Now again, that's not fantastic, but it doesn't look terrible either. All right. And notice, I'm going to make this smaller now. Just try to. All right. Can you see it's already? Responding, all right. So one of the reasons that people, I, I will tell you, you can look online and you can find articles like what I'm about to tell you. People hate floats. I mean, I know people who are developers. They just hate having to turn stuff on and turn stuff off, line stuff up, etc. Anything you can do to help you automate the process, they're going to like. All right. And this is one of those things that you can do. Now, what's left? Two things. Notice we've got in here nine products. They're all the same. It's, I, all I did was copy that, you know, nine times and change the number. And then we've got at the very bottom, we've got the footer. Okay? Well, the reason I'm telling you that is if we go back and one more time take a look at this, you'll notice that this next section has got a class of features. And we've got features, a feature inner, and a featured item. Now think about what this is. Features is all nine of those. All right. Features inner, you know, is kind of like, so imagine you drew a big box around all of it. Then you had another box around that. Then inside of there you had nine different boxes. I don't know if that makes any sense or not. All right. And you could turn around and say, well, why'd you do it this way? Why'd you do it that way? Again, I'm not going to lie to you. Some of this I took off of a thing I found on the internet that I thought was pretty would be pretty good for teaching. All right. Now, would I have done it like this exactly? I don't know. All right. So the next thing we want to do is we want to come in and put in our pound features. So this is the outside box, so to speak. All right, we're going to give that a background color. And some padding. I'm asking this question right now. Anybody, if you know it, please, please say it. If you don't, say that. You know what the difference is between a rem and an m? One is based off of your font size, and the other is based off of the Well, you're you're in the right ballpark. 
Okay, what rims are based off of the default font size at the top of your document, which is by default is 16 pixels. That's why one rim is 16 pixels. And M, rather than doing it based off of what's at the top, it does it based off of where you are and the parent of that. And if that parent doesn't have anything, it goes up to the next parent, and then the next parent, and it works its way off. Some people like M's because they say it gives you more control. I like REMs because I think it gives you more control. In fact, what some people actually do is they redefine their size up on the top of their screen where they make one REM. You can just do this in your CSS. You, where instead of a REM being 16 pixels, they make a REM 10 pixels. That way, if they want three REMs, it's just, or, or, or 30 pixels, it's just three REM. See what I'm saying? I, I hear I've got a lot of stuff in here where we've got decimal places. You don't have any of that if you set it yourself. That's just another thing that can be done. You don't have to do that, of course, though. All right. So the next thing that we've got in here, then, is our features inner. All right. First of all, let's just let me save this. And I don't know if it's going to change much. Not really. All right. I think the background color has changed a little bit from what it was, but that, that, that's about it right now. So, okay. So we've got features, inner. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set a max width on here. And here's, I couldn't remember, I didn't want to do the math in my head, so I did use pixels. When you work with widths and you start working with big numbers like that, this is where a lot of times people will still use pixels. Because I know, for example, 70 rem is 1120 pixels. So it would be what, you know, five more than that? It's like 75 rem. But most people look at 1200 pixels and can understand it better than they can 75 rem. All right, you could use either one, it wouldn't work. We want this centered. You know how to do centering. At least hopefully you remember how to do centering. All right, when you say margin, zero, auto. All right. Now, the first time, instead of, this, in, instead of working this, we're going to actually display grid instead of flex. So we're going to use grid on here. All right. What's the difference? Well, it's not display flex, it's display grid. One way to look at this is when you're working with Flexbox, everything is two-dimensional. It's x-axis and it's y-axis. All right. When you work with grid, it's actually three-dimensional. It's x-axis, it's y-axis, and there's also a z-axis where you can move stuff around easier on the x and y-axis than you can otherwise. So I'm going to put in the display grid here. All right. And then I'm going to tell it what I basically want these to look like. Let me put the whole thing in, and then we'll take a look at it and talk about what it means. And I'm probably going to have to close this because otherwise it's going to run off to the side. So. So the first thing we're saying in here is grid template columns. So what we're saying is this is we want this to be for each column. All right? And we want them all to be the same. So we're going to say in here repeat. Auto fit. Min max 300 pixels. Again, I could have used rems. 1FR, which is probably the hardest thing for most people to understand. There's two more lines here. Let me put them in, and then we'll go over them. Okay? So, grid, column, gap. Yep. 3RIM, grid, row, gap. Rod, row, gap. Around. All right. Let's first let me save this and let's see if we've made any noticeable changes yet. See the difference? All right. So look at that kind of as they say in your mind's eye, take a picture of that, of what that is. We, we can come back to it if we need to, but what I want you to understand is this. 
All right, what we're saying in here, we want these to be able to fit in here, okay? And the minimum that we want this to take up is 300 pixels for each. So, so put this in here, remember 1200. So put in there as much as you can fit in that 1200 pixels. And this is so you don't have to use percentages. All right, so like saying a third or a fourth or whatever, it's going to figure out based on the size of your screen, what's the maximum number that it can have. So again, when we looked at this, all right, notice what happens when we start to make it smaller. Now we're not done yet, so I'm not sure if it's going to look exactly the way I wanted to show you, but we'll look anyway. See how it went down from three to two? All right, and when we get it even smaller, it goes down and it stacks onto one. All right, now you can do that same exact thing with Bootstrap. You can do that same exact thing with Media Query. But we didn't have to write any Media Query. All right, and we've got this right here. Okay. All right, <clears throat> there's just a couple more things in here. So we've got the features inner, and I'll leave that up there if you still needed it. All right, and then we've got the featured item, and we're going to do some stuff with the featured item. So this is the individual ones. So the featured item, well, the first thing we'll do is we'll work with the H3 tag, because each one of those has got an H3 tag at the beginning. We'll set the color, and these are arbitrary. You could have set these to any color you wanted. If you don't like the way it looks, then change the colors, you know. All right, font size, 1.5 rem, font weight, normal. They should be anyway, but just I don't want there to be on any of these. Actually, with the F3, H3, rather, probably would have tried to bold it. And no margin, zero. All right, and the only thing, there's a couple things left. There's the paragraph, and then there's the footer. And that's all that's left. Again, no margin. We'll set a line height. And all that line height does, again, is it spaces out the paragraph so it doesn't look so crunched together. And we'll set a color. Kind of a darker gray. Okay, and then finally we'll put in the footer. Now most of this stuff, not all of it, but most of the stuff that you see in here, like the footer, for example, we're not doing anything with grid. We're not doing anything with, uh, with Flexbox. All right, I want it to align to the center. We'll put some padding all around it so it's spaced a little bit. In fact, let's just put we'll, up. We'll put in 1.5 or 2.5 RAM, and then zero. I don't. I shouldn't need any on the uh, left and right. Just the top and bottom. We'll set a color. All right, lighter gray and a font size. You probably know this, but in case you don't. Usually what people do with their footers, not always, but usually what they do is they take the font size of the footer and make it a little smaller. All right? Not that you have to do that, but I'm going to put in 0 0.75 rem. Okay? And that, I believe, that's everything. So I'm going to do a file save. All right, and then go back and take a look at it. So there it is. All right. And as they start shrinking it down, you've already seen this, but it reaches a certain limit. And this, where it breaks here, is based on the width that we gave it, that max width, and the way that we set up the grid. All right? Now, what, what I'll do, what I'll do is when we get done, if anybody had any problems with it, I'll just email you the finished file. Okay, 
But my question is, does it make sense what we're doing? Because again, I'd like you to try this with that simple website. All right, and the reason for that is, you know, when, when in this class, part of a big part of what your grade is going to be once we get going is not only does your site work, but is it a good looking site? You know, in the first semester, was it important? Yeah, it was when you did the, we did the project for the, uh, you know, the animal rescue place. You know, that, that is, was important. But really, most of the stuff that you did wasn't that important. Well, now, this is stuff that you should be spotlighting in your portfolio. All right, hopefully you're going to have yourself a good three or four or more pro projects in here and three or four more next semester in that, you know, or in, and you've already had those in the Android class. All right. All right, then let's take a look at the other one. Let's that one up on here. And now, <clears throat> with this one, it's broken down into about five parts, but I do want to show you something. Right there. When you look at it right now, it just looks like a mess, and it pretty much is a mess right now. All right? And I don't know about you, but one of the things I've never really liked is when you set up a form, you know, you can write justify your labels, etc., but getting them all to be the right size. You know what I'm talking about? And then when you have a text box, a lot of times too, it's like, well, what if I want this text box to be really big? You may or may not want that, but that's that actually is what we're going to do in this first part of the example here. So let me bring this up. All right. So I'm going to open up this one with code, the one that is called Flexbox. All right, and if we go ahead and take a look in here, right now, what do we have? Let me get rid of that. Okay. This is just generic stuff, so I gave you that. I mean, you can all understand. Hopefully, there won't be anything in here that you don't get. Okay? So, let's look at the first example that's there. And what's the first example? That's fixing, for lack of better words, that's fixing that form. All right? So, the first thing to take a look at you know, we're just going to go backwards, for lack of better words, and I'm going to look here in flex.html. So, first example. Well, notice I've got a div with a class of container. So, the first example is basically in here. Does that make sense to everybody? All right. So, I'm going to look at my container, but I'm not really going to do a lot with the container. That's just the holder. But... Every single row that's in here, I'm going to do a display flex on. It's going to be very little, and hopefully you're going to see right, oh, that makes sense. All right, that's the hope at least. And if it doesn't, then please say something. All right, so let's start putting in code. Dot container. So this is the container class. We could enter a couple of times here. In fact, I should have hit it there. Okay. All right, set a max width. You don't have to do this, but it makes it a little easier when you're working with it. So I set it to 750 pixels. All right, I put margin, okay, and I wanted 20 pixels. Remember, the first one, if you list it, it's top. All right, then right, then bottom, then left. So I'm, when you have the margin zero auto, that centers it on the page. I, that's what I'm doing now, but I'm also adding some top margin to it. Other than that, it's just a regular 
type of thing that we've used before. All right, so padding, 30 pixels, which is what? One point something, I don't know, one point. I'm just going to use, I, I put pixels in there, so 30 pixels, and I'm going to give it a background color of white. Oops, oh, and FFF. All right, questions on that? All right, now for each row that's in here, so what is that? Well, again, if we come back and we take a look at what's in here, there's a row for the first name, there's a row for the last name, there's a row for the email address, there's a row for the phone number. By default, you know, again, I'm not going to count these, but you can tell there's not the same number of letters in first as there are in last. So these are not going to line up by default. All right, that's what we want to do is we want to make them basically line up. So the first thing we're going to do is dot form row. And we're going to say that we want a little bit of padding on the uh, top and bottom, not much. All right, so I'm going to say padding 0 0.75, 0 0.75 rem and 0. All right, remember, if you have only two numbers, I'm sorry, that should be 75, that's my error. If you have only two numbers, the first number is for the top and the bottom. The second number is for the right and the left. All right, now we're going to tell it to display flex. All right. And I'm asking you a question here. All right, I'm going to bring this up, and I don't think it's going to look any much different at all. Okay, but if I had one of those two things, I know it's kind of hard to see. Let me make it bigger. So when you look in here, if I have to vary the size of either this or this, so either the label or the, the text box, which one do you think I want to vary? Which one do you think I'd want it to make bigger? The text box. I mean, we could conceivably have something very big in there. Would you agree? Depending on what we asked for. Maybe we asked for address, city, state, zip on one line as an example. We could have done that here. All right. So that's the one. Basically, that is the one between the two of them that we're going to do something with. All right. Now, I want to show you something. It, it's not magical, but this is hopefully one of the things you got out of looking at this, the West Bowes presentation that I asked you to take a look at. All right. So I'm going to put in here dot form row, and I want to target the label. All right. And I'm going to put in some right padding. And we'll put in 0 0.625, I think that's what it was, rem. And we'll give it a width of 8 rem. And we'll text align it to the right. Now I'm going to do something, and it's going to look weird at first, but just give me a second, and it'll make more sense. All right, I'm going to put in here flex 1. It's going to look really weird for just a second. We'll fix that in a second. So that's what we have now. Now when I go back and take a look at it again, because it doesn't really look any different, it's going to in just a second. All right? Unless I screwed up, and I don't think I did. All right. So we've got form, row, label, padding right, all right, the width, the text align right, and we set the flex there. All right. Then we're going to put in the input boxes, dot form, row, input. That's our text boxes, right? And we're going to say for that, flex 2. Now I want to look. I want to make sure I'm bringing up the right one, and this is the one I'm working on, because that actually should have fixed it. And it doesn't look like it did, but I'll tell you what, let's do this. I've got a lot of stuff open in here, so I want to start closing a few things. Just close all this stuff. There. That'll work. All right. Now I'm going to come in here, and I'm wondering 
if just like I did before, all right, not in there, in there, all right, so this is our Flexbox. When I go into my Flex.html, oh, I do have it undone. There it is. All right. Now, is that that big a thing? No. But what I do want you to understand is what this is going to do when we start to make it smaller. What's changing? What's changing there is the size of the text box. Does that make sense? And I made it only 750 because I didn't want it drawn out too far. I wanted where the effect would be a little bit bigger better, whatever you want to call it. I'm asking, and a couple of you have shaken your heads. Does that make sense? All right. Now, if for some reason we wanted to, and you, this is, again, why I had you look at the West Bowes thing, we could have come in, and instead of putting this as Flex 2, we could have made it 3. By saying Flex 2, what we're saying is we want, all the time, we want the our input areas to be twice as wide as our labels. All right, and I had to do a little bit of tinkering around with some padding and some stuff because before I put all this stuff in, if I get this stuff for the label, if I remove this, it's not going to look right. What it's what happens if you don't have that in there is it does it lines them all up exactly like that, but they're not the labels aren't aligned. So the first you know it looks kind of like the first one goes this far. And then immediately the text box starts. The second one goes this far. And the third one goes this far. It looks really out of whack, so to speak. All right? So that's the first example. So we're getting there. Like I said, there's, there's five examples here, and that's the first one. All right. Then with the second example, before I even go through and go through the stuff that's in there again, let's take one more look. All right? So... Remember, what we want this to look like eventually, what we want it to look like, we've now got the first part, all right? Now we've got this, and when you look at it, what, what's left just looks like a bunch of paragraphs and headings. So what we want to do is we want to grab these things, and I don't know if you remember us talking about this first semester. These are both sidebars. So this would be your main content, so let's say, again, this was a story about somebody, somebody uh, turning 100, okay? Then here they might have the fact that they served in World War II. And over here it might be something, yeah, you think that's something. They've got a, a sister who is 102. So they're tangential articles. They're, they're sort of along the same lines. They go with it. Now, one of the things to realize when you look at it is that right now the way that it's set up, the, these are not set up in this order. The main column comes first, then the sidebar one, then the sidebar two. And we can change that. We, we could literally have taken it and moved it around, do a cut and paste, but you don't have to do that. Because one of the things, again, you can do with Flexbox is you can change the order of columns. All right, so that's what we're going to do here. So ideally, when we get done with this second one right here, it's going to look like that. Like I said, right now, it looks like this. Not very good, but our first one is done. So let's go on. This was our last one that we just looked at, I believe, featured item, et cetera. All right. So for the second example, okay, well, we have a class in there that's called Column Layout. Oops. All right. And again, not that we had to, but for effect, we gave it a max width of 1,300 pixels. All right. Then a background color of white. Some margin, 
Same kind of way we did it before, except now I used 40 pixels. So we could just say what that would be. I don't even know. I'm just going to say pixels. 40 pixels, auto, zero, and auto. All right. Align height, because these are all paragraphs, of 1.65. Some padding. One point two five rem, oops, rem, and we'll say three rem. Might not look perfect, but it'll be okay. And again, display flex. All right. So this is the layout for everything that we're about to do. And remember, because there's not very much to this example now. There's three columns. There's our main column. There's our sidebar one column, and there's our sidebar two column. So we're going to put those in, and each one of them only has two different things. That's it. All right. So it does, the order in which we put these doesn't matter, but the order they actually are listed in the code is first dot main column. And we're going to put here flex 3 because we want this to be three times the width of the other ones, but we want order 2. And since there's three of them, order 2 will put that in the middle. Does that make sense? All right. Then we've got sidebar one and sidebar two, which are virtually identical to one another. Sidebar one, which is a flex one, and an order one, because we want that one to be first. And then <clears throat> a sidebar two, and that'll be flexed also for one. And the order on that one will be three. And that's it for that entire example. Now, let's make sure that I got it right. So we'll go back and take a look here. Oh, it doesn't look like it. First of all, it's not listed correctly. But you can see some of the stuff. This is three times the size. All right. I don't know why it looks funky, because I thought I did it the same way. But I'm going to look in just a second. There's our first sidebar. There's our second sidebar. So I want to go take a look. Main column, flex 3, order 2, sidebar 1, flex 1, order 1, sidebar 2, flex 1, order 3. Shouldn't be anything in the column layout that did that. Oh, you know what would be nice? would be to spell column right, wouldn't it? Main column. See what that does. Yeah, that's a little better. All right. And again, the order that they physically appear in the file are main column followed by sidebar one followed by sidebar two. But by us coming in there and using the order property, we can change that. Now, it, it's funny because I've watched a lot of videos on this, and a lot of people are like, isn't that great? I mean, like I said, you could have just manually changed the order, right? We could have cut and pasted it. But what's nice about this is one thing that you can do is you can more or less, it would take more than what we've talked about, but you can almost programmatically set it based on different things, what somebody's, maybe what somebody's interest is or whatever. You can change the order around in that way, all right? So, that's two of them. All right. So, the next one that we want to do is this. And when you take a look at what's in here, well, one of the things you can already tell that we're going to do is we're going to change colors. That's no big thing. But I do want you to understand a couple things. All right. This area that's in here, they're typically referred to as the gutter area. All right. And you, you typically would want them set up in one of two ways, either like they are here, where there's equal space between, but there's also that space around. And if you wanted to, what we could do is this could be half the, the, the width it is, this could be half the width it is, and you take the other half and put it over here and over here. And the only reason that I mention that is depending on what you're doing, how you're working with it, etc., that may become important as far as how you set stuff up.
All right, so let's go in and take a look at that one. So this is the third example. I mean, I, I'm not even going to ask because I don't know if this is helping or not to go through this, but I figured it's one thing for you to go through a bunch of examples that are there. It's another to try to run through a few of them as a class. All right. All right. So this thing was called, uh, given a class of callouts. Whoops. And the first thing is there's a container again around all of it. Another max width, this time 1,400 pixels. Another margin. This one again, 40 pixels, auto, zero, and auto. All right? That's the first thing. That's not going to do a whole heck of a lot, so we're not even going to look at that yet. Yes. Okay? All right. Then next is the callout class itself, not the container. So callout. And we'll put some padding all the way around it just so it'll look nice. One of the things I've always found that, that I'm not saying any of you, but many students have a problem with. Remember when we talked about the CSS box model? You remember that? Okay. And I'm, I'm just going to really quickly show you this. Because I started to talk to the newbies about this today, and I could see a couple people at least looking at me kind of like, what, what are you talking about? All right. This is that box model, and it says everything that you do in, you know, on a web page is in a box. Every letter in every, you know, is in a box. Every word of every letter is in a box. Every sentence is, etc. You can keep going. So where they say content, that's whatever you're keying in. It's typically either text or an image. All right. But what surrounds what surrounds the content is padding. Padding is invisible. You can, you can size it, you can make it bigger or smaller, but you can't color it or do anything with it. It's padding. All right? Then you've got a border. So you can look at it that the padding is what's between the content and its border. All right? But really, it's the area around the content itself, where the margin is the area or the distance between two elements. So you're, when you're talking padding, it's, it's within the element itself, when you're talking margin, it's within multiples. So if we go through here and we look at this try it yourself example, all right, if I go through here and I change the padding to 150, oops, not like that, and then I run it, that should be pretty obvious what just happened right there. All right? And at the same time, make it back, back to 50 again so it looks like it did, okay? So if we come in here, and let's just say, I don't know, I'm, I'm going to cut this way down. So where is that div? Right here. I'll make another one. This is probably going to look a little funny, but it should work for what I want to show you. All right. So I'm going to grab this div that we put in here. I'm just going to copy it. So there's two of them now. All right, and I'm going to run it. Now, there's the two. All right, and there's the holder for the, 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 the main div right there. But what I want to show you is if we come in here and we do margin 120, what you should see is the area that's around here should be what's changing. See that? And I mean, that, that, those are just things that, that have to make sense to you. All right. I hope it is that they do. All right, so in this call out, we said padding. Now, somebody tell me. I'm asking you. Can somebody tell me? Oops. You remember what that is? Does anybody remember what that is? No. Okay. So, in that example that I just showed you, if, if you've got content, and that content is 100 pixels, that's its size, correct? Okay? And when you're figuring out its size, you're using the 100 pixels. But let's say you put 20 pixels of padding on each side. Now it's not 100 pixels anymore. It's 140. There's 20 on each side. All right? And that's what it does by default. It figures in 
the padding and the margin when it's doing calculations. With border box, you're basically telling it not to. And if you say, I don't understand, maybe when you see it in just a minute, it'll make a little bit more sense. All right, we'll put a margin bottom on here. And that'll be 1.25 rem. And this is what you, what you can do in here. Flex basis 30%. Now, hopefully you at least saw that in that West Boas presentation. But what that's basically saying is rather than saying one-third, 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 all right, you can say, well, why didn't you use 33.3 again? Because we're using border box. Because we're putting some padding in there. We've already got padding in there. All right? So, not sure if it's going to look a lot different yet or not. Oops, I don't want that one. I want the one we were working with. That. That. And we're there. All it's done is there's a little bit of spacing that's been put in there. All right? So, now we're going to come in here, and we're actually, for the first time, we're going to put in a media query. All right? And after I put it in, I would appreciate it if somebody could either tell me or at least take an educated guess on what this means. All right? So remember, with a media query, it's at media, and I'm media, and I'm going to put in here So we're saying at a minimum width of 900 pixels, so 900 pixels and above. Make sense? That basically, for this container, we want it to be flex and we want it to be evenly spaced. All right. The next thing we're going to do is we want to change the color of each one of those boxes, so to speak. Put them in a box and have each one be their own color. Now there's a lot of ways that we can do this. All right, but one way that we can do it, and this is one place where, to me, CSS is a little bit different. And what I mean is, sometimes it starts counting at zero, and sometimes it starts counting at one. Now, I I don't understand that personally. I think they should have picked one way or the other, and I don't care which one they picked. But here's one where they start counting at one. So dot call out, and we're going to use the nth and child and we're going to choose child one what does that mean that means that whatever we're about to put here in fact I think there can't be a space there I think it's got to go like that maybe I'm wrong we'll, we'll find out this we're, it's going to be filled in in a second we'll give it a background color uh, pound C Zero D B E two. All right. Can you put a space in there? No, it doesn't want one. So we're, all we're saying is for this first box, we want it to be that color. Okay. And I'm going to put a couple more in here. Now I can go and type those in, but since they're all pretty close to one another, I'm just going to copy it three times. So this will be number two. This will be number three. And I'm going to change the color a little bit on each one of them. Oops. Stop it. So this will be CDF1C3. And this one will be CCB9DA. All right. So there is some variety between them. Now, I'll leave this up there, but let me just quick look here. See what we have? 
and notice what happens when we get under 900 pixels. See how it immediately stacked? All right. And that was the media query that did that. All right. So here was that code. So again, first one, second one, third one, set the colors. We could have set it to anything in the world we wanted to set it to. Could have even made them the same color, but that probably wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't have seen the effect then. And there's, there is stuff that I didn't do in here, because I modified the examples that I found online, but I didn't modify them drastically. All right, what I mean is, we could have come in here, we could have centered the headings, etc. There's a lot of stuff that could have been done. That wasn't the idea behind this. All right. All right. So there's two more examples that are in here. Okay. And if we take a look, it's this one and this one. All right. And what we want to have happen, this one is going to work with that wrap that we talked about before. And I think if we get to a certain size, it's just, it, it's going to try, if we didn't wrap, it would try to take all of these and put them on the same line. And even when we got real narrow, it would still be on the same line. That's not what you're going to want, because that would look really, really bad. All right? And so we're going to fix that. And then with the last one, they may not look like much, but this, is, this text is centered both horizontally and vertically. That is very hard to do with just regular CSS. There's a lot of work that's involved in doing that. All right. So let's go and look at these two that are in here, okay? All right. All right. So we are down as we keep going in here. Third example, there's the call out we just did. So this is the fourth one. It doesn't show because, I mean, it's just a div, and I guess it's got one through five in it. That's all it's got in it right now. Each one of those divs is going to be put into a box, and then we're going to wrap the boxes. All right, so when you look, we've got fixed size container, and that's the holder of all of them, and then fixed size for each one. Make sense? So, oops. First one is dot fix size container. All right, max width again of fourteen hundred pixels. Oh, it's supposed to be a fixed size. You put it at the end of size. You are correct. Thank you. Yeah, I spelled something wrong this morning, and they were good enough to catch it for me. I always appreciate that. So 40 pixels again, auto, zero, and auto. Background color, white, Some padding. And here we're going to tell it to display flex. What we get next is we say align the items that are in there. Center them. Okay. Justify content. We want that gutter area basically to be set, so space around. And we want it to wrap. Now we're not done. We still have to do the individual ones, but I'm going to do a file save. And you can see the stuff is now out there. Sorry about that, what do you get? 
See what it, where it is? And now notice it is centered. And when I come in here, it's not doing anything because those are the individual items themselves. So that's, that's basically what we want to flex, for lack of better words. All right. All right. So we did the dot fixed size container. Now we got to do the dot fixed size. So these are the individual things that are in our container. And fortunately or unfortunately, there's a few of them. All right. The width is 150 pixels. What does that mean? Again, between the width and the padding that you put in there, that's how many you're going to allow in a row based on the size of what you're working with. All right. The height is going to be 100 pixels. The background color is going to be pound 99OB47. Now, just making those changes, just those, we still got five or six more lines here, but just making those changes, you can see what's happened. Now, because previously, the divs are just divs, and by themselves, they didn't have a height or a width associated with them. So you couldn't see anything. Now the numbers are gone, but we'll change that in just a second. We'll set the color to white so that they stick out. All right, so we've got our background color. Again, the color will just be white, so our text color. We'll put a line height in here. Sorry. Align them to the center. We'll bold them so that they stick out a little bit. Oops. We'll give them a nice big font size so that they stick out. And we'll give it some bottom margin. About 20 pixels, so again, 1.25 rem. Either way, we'll be fine. So by doing that, let's just take a quick look and I'll go right back to it. There's what we have. All right. And you'll notice that as we make these smaller now, they should wrap. And they're not, so I'm missing something. See, that's the problem. See that? They're not wrapping right now. I did say flex wrap wrap. I say spelled something wrong, which is totally possible. Do you say to put a flex wrap wrap in the fixed size container? Because I don't. See it. I don't either. And, and actually, we don't want it. We want it in the. Yeah, we want it the fixed size container. We want it up here. I said it, but I don't think I put it in. So in here, we want a flex wrap wrap. We'll go back to your fixed size container and put that in. I will tell you, this is going to be interesting this whole semester just because of the fact that as long as we're wearing these and I keep getting fog in here, I'm going to be making mistakes. Not on purpose. I can just tell you that I'm naturally going to be making mistakes. Not an excuse. I'm just, I'm just telling you the truth from the get-go. So now let's look. See that? And when we get down to about as small as it can get, they're centered because we told it to be, etc., and they've wrapped. And again, we've got total control over when this happens, how this happens, etc. All right? So the last thing that's in here, right now it just says, center me, please. All right? So let's go in and fix that one. That's the last one that we have to work on here. Anybody have any questions on this one, on anything we've done? 
All right. No questions, but could you go back to the uh, big yes. size container? I just need the yes, bottom, so I made a typo. And... Down on the thick size below the color. I need the font size and the margin. Thank you. No problem. This last one literally will take five minutes. Thank you. Okay? So, with the last example here, if we take a quick look at it, not much in there, right? So, there's a, there's a class of banner and a class of center me. It could have been called banner inner. We could have called it anything we wanted to. All right, so with this last example here, for the banner class, all right, we'll give it a height of 400 pixels. And again, I could have also gone in and put in 25 rem. Would have been just fine. All right, a max width of 700 pixels. A margin, that we've been using this margin all over the place. 40 pixels, auto. This one will do a 40 pixel again, and auto. All right, we really could have just put it in there twice. I don't know why I put it in there four times. In other words, if I would have just put in this, right there, it would have done this. It's fine the way it is. Set up a background color. Two A, two A, two A. All right. I had weird stuff happening with people this morning, and what do I mean? You know how you put that color in like that? How you get the little boxes? One guy didn't work. Okay, and I didn't realize you could do this. I have never seen it on my machine, but on his, he had his choice that where he could have HTML or it had Django HTML. Django was basically what you use to write websites with Python. And his had been defaulted to Django HTML. And when he did that, it didn't show him the colors. He had a couple of other things. He had problems with Emmet and a few other things. As soon as he changed that, everything started working. Never even heard that before. All right. And finally, one we want to display flex. All right. About three or four more lines, and believe it or not, we're done. All right. Dot center me. So that was the name of that class. There's four, three lines in here. We want this to be white, so we want the text in there to be white. The background is almost black. All right, so the font size, we'll make it <clears throat> 3.25 rem and center it, margin, auto. That's maybe the first time you've seen that because that says to center everything. We've, we're used to margin zero auto, which just centers left and right, but we also want to center top and bottom. The idea behind this is this please me that's in here should be perfectly centered. So let's look. There it is. Now, again, it's not that that's that big a thing, but notice as I come in here and I change our size, this thing remains centered. That's what's important about it. It is still centered inside of the box. Now, it's not perfect, all right? But so what I did was I tried to come in and give you about a dozen examples of, of different things that you can use in here. Now, if any of you had problems, just send me an email, and I'll send you the completed copy, okay? And if you didn't have any problems, great. All right, so let's take one more look. This is what I sent you. So this is what I'm going to ask you to do. So I'm going to give you, um, I think what we'll do is we'll wait till Friday, and I'll give you some time on Friday. But even tomorrow, we're going to go in, and we're going to finish that HTML book and go into the JavaScript book. But what I'll do is I'll try to lecture no longer than, let's say, 2 to 2.30, and I'll give you an hour to an hour and a half, you know, to an hour and a half to two hours each day to work on this. That makes sense? All right. And then by the end of the week, my hope is, We'll be done with that HTML book and really well through the JavaScript book. What I want to concentrate on more next week 
is the last section of that JavaScript book because that's going to get us into stuff we're going to need to understand Node. That all makes sense? All right. So what I gave you, I had it in here. So this is what, you know, I hand it out to you. This is the actual finished product here, okay? But you're going to create this. I've given you those two paragraphs of text. These two paragraphs, even though I gave them different names, I didn't realize that. These two paragraphs are exactly the same as these two. So the only difference between these two pages, there's two differences. This one says welcome. This one says about. That one has an image. That one doesn't have an image. Does that make sense? All right. The MPG should work. So in other words, now notice I've got nothing in there. Now, red was not a good color to use for that. I probably should have used white. But it actually does give an error message. All right. It says whatever. It can't be empty or whatever. And if I do come in and put too big a number in here, I again... Now I get a different message. So the one message should say something like non-numeric or blank entry, you know, input not allowed, or whatever you want it to say. And we've done this one in class before, one like this, where you should have like miles driven, give it a maximum, probably like a thousand miles. If you want it to be a hundred, I don't care. And give it a maximum and a minimum of gallons used. And then it's just a very simple calculation. All right. Then for this. I first want you to do this the old bump and grind way, in other words, with, without anything, just regular CSS. If you don't like the way that this looks because I centered the stuff here, if you want it right justified so it all goes up to here, that's fine. I don't care. So that'll be the first part. Then I want you to go back and add some media queries to it. So really what I'd rather have you do is to literally make you know, have your copy of it and either make three other copies. I want some way that you, I can delineate it so I can see how you did each part. Does that all make sense? All right. And my hope is if we get as far as I think we can get by Friday, you'll get most of Friday to work on this. All right. And I guess what I'll probably ask you to do is Friday, just give me a copy of what you've got. All right. And I'll take I'll take a look at it. You know, because I, what I want to know is if, if people are like, oh, that. You know, if I look at it and it's like, mm, they didn't do anything, then i got to go back and spend more time on this. All right? So, you want to start working on it now? You can. I guess they're really starting to push it here because some instructors are letting students go like a half an hour early or whatever, and we've already been told you better not do that. So, I'm not going to do that. All right, now I did say you weren't here yesterday, and I'll tell you what it is because my wife said, why don't you just tell them the truth? And it is the truth. Um, I maybe have told you this before. I've been trying to learn how to play guitar for 20 years and failed miserably. So I'm taking lessons on Monday. My lessons are at 5 o'clock. I can make it home, but I said on, on Mondays, we're not going to take a late afternoon break. I'm going to let you go a quarter to. That way I get home after I clean up the room here. I get home around 4, and I still have time to change and do everything. I'm not that worried about that now. I'm worried about that when the weather changes. You know, and so I just thought we'll just get used to doing it now. Okay. Questions on what I'm asking you to do? All right. Then go to it. 